BBC Radio Berkshire, Tony Blackman here with you through till uh, 10 o'clock, then Anne Diamond will be along. It's 10 minutes past nine. Uh, nice to have you company. Do you get tinnitus from time to time? Normally it goes away quickly, but it uh, can hang around for an hour or two, or you start feeling as though you might be, it might be going round and you might be going round the bend with it. I personally have tinnitus myself. So how would you cope? It's funny actually, I'm reading this. And I'm reading basically what I already have. So I think without reading that, let's go, without further ado, go to Peter Humphreys, who also has tinnitus, so neither of us will be able to hear one another. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about, I mean, tinnitus, explain, uh, you explain what, what it is to you, and then I'll explain what it is to me. Well, it's, it's just a, a noise in, in your ear. Um, yeah. It just keeps on sort of a ringing noise. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's... Uh, well, you just get used to it's it. It's very difficult to describe what it is, isn't it? I mean... It's difficult to describe Everybody it. has a different sound, I think, don't they? It, everybody has different sound. It, it, it goes lower or higher. Yes, that's right. And yeah. um, mine has now gone down to a very low peak. Yeah. So I'm quite happy with what I've got now than I did have... 20 years ago. So how did you manage to... Uh, I mean, I, I find, with, with tinnitus myself, I find that you gradually... You forget about it, and it's just there the oh, whole yeah, time. It, but it, occasionally it goes, and you think, oh, that's lovely. It's really quite peaceful. It is very peaceful when it disappears. Um, doesn't you, often happen. You concentrate on uh, other things as well. Mm. You don't have to worry about this noise in your head all the time. Yeah. And then um, it, it just disappears. It can be hereditary as well, I think. I mean, my mother had it. Yeah, I've, I have heard that, yes. Yeah, so I think my, probably, for me, it's hereditary. But also, of course, I wear headphones the whole time and for the last 50 years been playing very, very loud music, which I was warned about, but didn't take it. When you're young, you don't take any notice of it. But how do you think you got yours? I, well, I worked uh, with a lot of le uh, loud um, machinery mm. in the past, um, back in the 60s and 70s, and uh, I... I put it down maybe to that. I, I yeah. honestly don't know, but it could have been that. How's it affected you? Do, I mean, do you find it difficult to sleep or not? Um, it was very difficult to sleep at uh, home. Um, also, uh, you, you got into sort of moods and mm. you know and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So, but that really, so it really was quite quite. Uh, I don't know, pronounce for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you had treatment for it, is that right? Yeah. I, um, Tell us about the treatment. The treatment was um, done by um, the tennis clinic at uh, Harley Street. Mm. Uh, I went there, made an appointment, and I went there and had it once a month. I went there every month for about three or four months. Mm. Five, no, five months, continuous. They gave me the unit, I call it the unit, um, but, um, or the gadget. Yeah. And, uh, they showed me how to use it and et cetera, et cetera. And then, uh, I took it home and I was using it six hours a day. So what, or, it, what does it consist of? Is it something you put um, in your ears or what? It's, it's a little box. Yeah. Uh, it's clipped onto some earphones. Yes. Goes into your ears mm. and it sends a signal to your brain. Mm. Uh, goes through to your brain on one side of your 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 your, your head. Yeah, and uh, it it's all different sounds. There's about three or four different sounds on this unit that automatically sort of programmed to do yeah, that. Yeah, so uh, you they they programmed that at the mm. tennis clinic. So that went on for five. Uh, what was it? Five or six months. Five or six months. Yeah. So now, has it has it improved a lot it's or not? It's very Im much improved. I hardly get it at all. And I've hardly used the gadget now. Mm. I haven't used it for the last seven or eight months now. Mm. Now, is this something that uh, I mean, you've got no tinnitus at all now, or have you got a little bit? I can go without the tit the noise in me me head for about oh seven seven or eight months now. Really, and uh, yeah. occasionally it comes on. And then disappears. Yeah. So and uh, it's too too late to connect this up because mm. it disappears. Oh, this I is the it. this is the gadget. You got, yeah, I got it. Got with there. Me, yeah. If I want to go back there, I'd have to recalibrate it on their computer yeah. to the different sounds because the sounds go lower. 
Oh, I see, yeah. And they have to calibrate this yeah. this little gadget. F- uh, Fido, I'll give that back to you then. Thank you. I'm, I'm really interested in that. That's uh, terrific stuff. And thank you very much, VD, for coming in to tell us about it. That's we're going we're gonna to talk to the person a little bit later on that uh, you, you saw in Harley Street, I do believe. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, I'm very grateful for that. And he'll tell yeah. us all about it, because this is a brand new thing, isn't it? It is. Uh, because when I got tinnitus myself, I, I know an, a, an expert on ears, and uh, she gave me loads of leaflets. Basically, I read the leaflets telling me that there was no cure for it. Well, so that's, I wasted what, it. <laughs> that's what I was told when I went yeah. to, the, to the hospital. Yeah. Um, there was no, no cure for it whatsoever. Just yeah. put up with it, I was told. Yeah. 23 minutes past nine, Tony Blackman here with you through till 10 o'clock then, and um, and now we can speak to Mark Williams, an audiologist with the uh, Tinnitus uh, Clinic, which treated Peter. Hello to you, Mark. Good morning. First, uh, first of all, I mean, I, I have tinnitus myself. Mm. Tell us what it is. it actually is. Well, tinnitus is a sensory deprivation disorder, really, that's uh, inextricably linked uh, to hearing loss Mm. uh, and manifests um, as an illusion uh, of noise. Um, It's usually some kind of a high-pitched perception um, that is localised within the ears or within the head. Is it, a, is it a problem with your ears or your brain? It's neurological, uh, fundamentally. Yeah. Um, it's, sort of, it's been bounded together with, uh, with audiological or hearing science for many years, but it, it genuinely is a neurological disorder um, yeah. that has really more in common with other sensory deprivations. So it's my brain, is it? It is, yeah. The hearing loss is the yes. driver to mm. it, and uh, it, the, it leads to, in mammals at least, this leads to an isolation uh, of the of, a, of the hearing component of the brain, mm. and in about ten percent of us, because we all do lose our hearing as we as we move yes. through life, all mammals do. Um, but uh, in about ten percent of us, um, that causes the nerve cells that make up the isolated component uh, of the brain to fire spontaneously, mm. uh, and it's this constant spontaneous firing that gives birth to this illusion of noise. So how how do you in fact get it? I mean, I mean, I've been broadcasting for fifty years. Or or so, and yeah. loud music I've been putting through my head. Sure. I suppose that has something to do with it. Well, yes, I mean, the thing is, I mean, the hearing lot, some of us are genetically predisposed uh, towards losing our hearing, mm-hmm. uh, and things like noise exposure, or indeed other pathologies, and the sort of life we've led, uh, can bring that process on a little bit fiercer um and uh, it's it's really we we lose our high pitch hearing uh, first and it's very much an insidious process um and the the ear works like an acoustic prism um so it divides sound up into different channels so the whole system's configured a little bit like a keyboard and it's the area of and the our, the way that our brains are configured is in a very similar channel like configuration so it's the high pitch component of our brains that typically Mm. Uh, become starved and that's where the aberrancy emerges and this is really why a lot of us hear it as being a high pitch uh, signal so the type of tinnitus that you experience correlates with the hearing loss that you've acquired I get a sort of a whooshing sound. It's like being by the seaside most of the time. It's like a shushing sort yes, of sound. Yes, that's right. That's, yeah, so that's right, yeah. Uh, that's about, I mean, about 30%, we try and divide the illusions up into mm. time. I mean, they're very real to the individual, you know, don't get me wrong. It's only mm. an illusion because there is a lack of an external signal. But we try to divide them up into tonal and atonal variants. Mm. Tonal being more note-like, ringing, buzzing and whistling. But what you're describing is an atonal perception. That's about what 30% of people get. But it, it would... It would correlate with some form of high pitch hearing loss. Mine is a bit more special than is it? Is that what you're <laughs> saying? Slightly more unique. <laughs> <You're> quite right. <laughs> well, I'm glad about that. <laughs> it, is it hereditary as well? Because my mother had it as well and yeah. she's obviously not a disc jockey. We haven't got any evidence for it to be so, no. but I mean it's all circumstantial evidence. We haven't actually got any genetic markers for it yet, um, mm. which is a bit frustrating, uh, but it, it does appear to be. From a case study perspective mm. it does seem to run in families. So tell us about the treatment that, because I've read all these pamphlets on it and mm. says it can't be treated. But you and now, is this a brand new treatment you discovered? Well, this is a new treatment that was that uh, was designed um, uh, by a professor, Peter Tass, uh, at the Ulick Research uh, Centre in Germany, uh, which is a state-funded uh, centre of excellence uh, for mainly sort of physics and biophysics research. Um, and uh, the traditional way 
that tinnitus has been dealt with over the years is to try and stimulate a process called habituation, which is to really try and reduce the negative emotional impact of the condition, so to treat anxiety, depression, the various other circumstantial components of it, and to try and make it over a period of time a little bit more like the noise of your own breathing, you know, something mm. that doesn't induce this uh, this horrible anxiety or, or you know it doesn't disrupt life um the new way well the sort of contemporary way of trying to approach it and there's a number of treatments that are evolving uh, to do this uh, is to try and directly uh, reduce the uh, the abnormal nerve firing um, at brain level and uh, we treated peter uh, mm. with a with an acoustic uh, method of treatment called acoustic coordinated reset neuromodulation i mean it's a very <laughs> it's quite mm. it's quite a verbose name but I mean, neuromodulation is about trying to reduce uh, nerve activity patterns. And what we do in this case is we try and we try and target uh, the area of the brain that's producing uh, the signal. Um, and because, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the system is is like a keyboard. It's got this beautiful regulate regulated structure to it. If we can calculate the pitch of the tinnitus, then we can target uh, mm. the the area of the brain that's generating it and trying to reduce. It. And we use a, a particular type of uh, acoustic prescription for that. Uh, by stimulating around that area of the brain, you can damp down the firing on a sustainable basis. He was telling me you have to sit there with the, the, these things in your ears for about six hours a day. Yeah, it, I mean, it, most people couldn't have time to do that, could they? Well, that's yeah, absolutely. It, sound, it, it does sound like a tall order. Um, the issue, the, the thing is, though, that the the, the headphone system that's utilised mm. is an open headphone system, so it doesn't actually block your ears up. Um, um, it's a very soft, gentle prescription, um, to the individual at least. Uh, so it doesn't actually preclude you from going about your daily business. You can use the telephone, engage mm. in conversation. Um, so it, sh it, it, ha it can't be a barrier to you and the world. Otherwise, you'd never get the dosage in. Does this work for everybody or not? No, it doesn't. Uh, it works best at the moment for individuals who perceive tonal tinnitus. So this is ringing, buzzing, whistling, these sorts of perceptions. Mm. We also have to have enough the audiologists um, or the clinical scientists who are who are actually programming it we also have to have enough residual hearing to work with you've got to have enough uh, functionality within the auditory system mm. to get these signals to the brain so there are a couple of limitations mm. to it but uh, we we tend to determine if your suitability um, at appointment you know we have to put Yep. We have to check the auditory system. Very quickly, Mark, because we're yeah. running out of time. Sure. Uh, so you could spend four and a half thousand pounds on this treatment, and it has no effect on you at all. Is that well, right? no. We the thing is, we in, in, if there there is a suitability criteria that's mm. applied, um, and that has been that's really that's evolved really over the last sort of two years. Um, and if we can if we can get a tick in every box, so to speak, yep. then the uh, the chances of this actually reducing uh, the perception from an objective point of view. Are, are very high. So if I uh, if I come to you and uh, and I, I get this thing for four and a half thousand quid and I, I tell you it hasn't worked and it actually has, you give me my money back, will you? We do have a trial period, actually. <laughs> uh, we do. It's uh, just in case. Uh, the thing is, it's a long-term treatment. You yeah. know, we, what we want to see, really, what I want to see as a clinician is uh, is a reduction in the salience uh, of the or the the invasiveness of the tinnitus really within the first sort of twelve weeks. That's a good sign that we're moving in the right direction. What I want to see mark is a reduction in that price <laughs> well and i'll be i'll be at your <laughs> clinic <laughs> it, will, it will go i mean it's it's first generation med yep. tech this is the thing and as it becomes more prolifically available the price will inevitably drop i'm looking forward yeah. to that thank you very, <laughs> very, mark thank you very much oh, indeed my pleasure. For being with thank us. you thanks thank a lot you. that's uh mark there from the uh, tinnitus clinic in uh, harley street i do believe let's get the weather now with corsa quamar